Is it on me? Yeah. Oh, yeah, we see you. Nope. Nope. No, it's not. <laughs> Is it now? Yeah. Hello and welcome to the Boys Upstairs Show. This is the Week 8 NFL show. Let's go. Nice. Not nah, yeah, we're redoing that. That was so, so <laughs> weird. All right. Dude, you, you gotta give us a countdown, dude. You like you like, like whenever dude. whenever I say show, that's that's like the cue to scream. All right. Good to know. Is it on me? Yeah. Yes. Every time he says, "What's we'll on?" Everyone we'll says yes. Everyone, everyone say yes. It's on him. It's on Tommy. Tommy, it's on you, brother. It's on you. Just, just a thumbs up will do for him. All right. Is it on me? Yeah. Tommy, it looks like a bomb went off there. Your room got really bright all of a sudden. I have. I, I have. Yeah, it's light. on Scott. <laughs> uh, all right. Is it on me? What? Yeah, twenty-one and a half. Twenty and a half. Nixon. What Can you mute? At twenty and a half. Didn't she just say twenty-one? <laughs> It's not me. All right. Uh, hello and welcome to the Boys Upstairs Show. This is the Week Eight NFL Show. Woo! Yeah, that's right. So game one on the slate here, we have – this is the first time I talked about both of these teams this year. The New York Giants surprise team of the NFL and Seattle Seahawks surprise team of the NFL this year. So this is a huge game. Who is real? Who is not real? The Giants traveling to Seattle. Seahawks are minus three at home. Total is 44 and a half. I don't think this game is necessarily a determiner of which team is real. I think it is more just are the Giants real. And I am picking the Giants this week at plus three which may seem like a trap to everyone, it, as it did last week. They were three-point dogs to Jacksonville. They were an underdog to Jacksonville, beat them anyway. They're finding ways to win the games in the fourth quarter. Brian Brian Dayball, probably going to win coach of the year if he keeps this up. Even if they win eight games, he'll still probably win coach of the year. But the Giants have just been like – they've just been winning games. Like there's not much flash. Daniel Jones has been running a lot, which has worked really well. Saquon looks in form, kind of looks like he was at Penn State. But other than that, not much to rave about. Just well coached, well managing games well. And um, the Seahawks, hey, they've been doing what they've been doing, and it's been working for them. Kenneth Walker is a stud. Great replacement. He's probably better than Rashad Penny was to begin with. Geno Smith's just playing his heart out. DK Metcalf got carted off the field last week, I think. Um, so that could have an effect into how this he game said, plays P- out. Pete Carroll said he's playing. He's playing? Okay, he's so playing. DK is playing. Uh, still, I don't think that makes much of a difference. I think it could be close. It could be the Giants could win by a lot, but uh, the Giants getting uh, plus plus money, Giants, whatever the hell I'm trying to say there, I think that's a that's an easy bet. Giants plus three. I think the Giants. You know, I mean, are they real? Are they real? They're they're six and one, and the Seahawks are what? I'm pretty sure four and three. And they're scoring a lot of points. One of the best offenses currently in the NFL. I don't know if it's a proven game for either of them. I think this is a surprise big game on the NFL slate. And I'm kind of glad we're picking it. I'm taking the Seahawks plus three here. Giants traveling all the way out to Seattle. I'm taking Seahawks plus three, but I'm excited to watch, you know, some ground and pound, real, real running the football down your throat type football game. Saquon Barkley's playing out of his mind. So I just think that the Giants have momentum this year and they're they're showing that they they actually have been improving, even though it hasn't seemed like it. And I'm also taking the over uh the Seahawks lead in completion percentage and yards per attempt. So I think it's gonna be a high scoring game, but uh I think the Giants gotta come away with this one. I just don't I don't think the C- the Seahawks can keep up. Eli Manning was benched for Geno Smith once upon a time in one of the craziest coaching moves of all time. Gino kind of went outside with the Giants. So this is a Geno Smith revenge game. I think that is a huge factor. I think he wants to beat the Giants. I think that it means something to him. And just, just part of his revenge tour of the league of saying that he's not a bust and he's a guy. So I'm taking Seahawks. They're at home. And like everybody said, uh, the Giants are really good this year, but I think that they're going to be due for a loss at some point. Um, he's not writing back. So I think that it's going to be Seahawks. I don't want to touch the total because it's a little 
like it could be like a really low scoring game or it could be a shootout because like Kobe said, these defenses aren't that great. So I'm just taking the Seahawks. Yeah, Tommy, I'm going to jump in there and trail you on that. I like um, I like everything you said there. I like the Hawks in this one too. Uh, minus three, I think the Seahawks are going to be able to see that the Giants need to pass the ball. You can't run the ball when you're down. So if it turns into a passing game, well, the Seahawks are going to win it all day, every day. We saw Marquise Goodwin have a great game um, last week and go out and get two touchdowns and backflips and everything. So Seahawks in this one, like Mark was saying, Kenneth Walker, what a day he had uh, last week and what a season it looks like he's going to have in general. So, I mean, the Seahawks are the team um, offensively that I think look like one of the best in the NFL right now and I like them to outscore the Giants in this one so I'm going to go Seahawks minus three. I think this game is really just a battle of uh, play style difference and schematic differences. Uh, the Seahawks have pretty much an air raid offense because they have to put, put up points on the board because their defense is pretty much non-existent and the Giants play a lot of complimentary football. They rely a lot on their running game and they rely a lot on their defense. From what I anticipate, I think that the the Seahawks are going to come out, put some points up on the board pretty early. And the Giants aren't a team that are built to play from behind. You know, when, when he's not relying on Saquon in the play action pass, which probably won't be there if they fall behind pretty quickly, just punch him right in the mouth and um, they'll struggle to come back from behind. So I got Seahawks uh, plus, uh, minus three here. A couple of years ago, if you remember, Steelers started off 11-0. And a lot of criticism. No one believed they were for real. And it proved they weren't really. Um, I kind of feel like that's uh, the same way with the Giants. They uh, they got all these weapons and whatnot. They look, they look nice, but, I mean, they, they've beaten nobody. And, I mean, they had a nice win against the, the Ravens, but every bad team has a loss every now and then. So, um, give me the Seahawks with the points. Give me the over. And give me a uh, Kenneth Walker touchdown if that is uh, available. I'm not sure yet. I'll let you know. But if it is, I'll put that on. That will, <laughs> that will not be plus money at yeah, all. I don't, I don't think, <laughs> yeah, I doubt it. I, I don't think it will be either. A fun little stat, though, that I just remembered. One out of every five of Kenneth, Walker, Kenneth, Kenneth Walker's runs are 20-plus yards, which is pretty crazy. Best waiver wire pickup in history. Okay, no need to flex there. Look back at the league league table and humble yourself. I think that, there, Sam, I think right? that through <laughs> through one week of play as a sample size, you know, Eno Benjamin was the best waiver wire pickup this year so far. I would say Geno Smith, but that go ahead. Eno Benjamin in one game got me twenty no, points. No, but Eno he's Benjamin, he's he's not relevant now, man. So I mean, you, you want a season long? Like, I mean, yeah, I'm saying, one week sample size. You know, Benjamin was the wire. That's that's not a game. thing. That's not a way. That's, yeah. that's a that's an ad. That's a weekly wire. waiver wire. Yeah, that's, that's that's a a waiver. Waiver. like like you might have won waiver wire pickup of the week, but not the year. <laughs> Sorry, buddy. All right, game two on the slate here. So this is the Monday night game, but we're making it game two on the slate here, so we can save Sunday night football for game three. Bengals are traveling to Cleveland. The Bengals are minus three and a half. The total is forty seven. You know, the Browns had a close one in, in Baltimore, you know, just this past Sunday. But I, I really I really think the Bengals are, are are just getting the ball rolling. This is the same. This is around the same time last year that they, you know, started to put things together and had a magical playoff run. So, um, you know, as much as it pains me to say, I think the Bengals are going to win this one and uh, pretty convincingly, actually. Love the Bengals. And I really, really, you know, one of the most exciting offenses to watch. I think what they did last week to the Falcons was um, disheartening if you were an Atlanta Falcons fans and, and almost disrespectful to an extent. With that being said, Browns are on a four game losing streak. Uh, I believe three out of those four games, besides the one of the Patriots coming uh, within a loss of three to four points. So they're playing teams very, very closely. I'm taking the Browns plus three and a half here. Uh, everyone's going to be watching primetime game. I think Denzel Ward. Uh, and Miles Garrett are going to, you know, kind of be mainstays on that defense for a while now, and they uh, they really need to solidify their place uh, as some dogs. And they are some dogs. Um, Jacoby Brissett has been serviceable. Same with Amari Cooper and Joku's out, which sucks. I mean, Nick Chubb will probably run for, what, 22 carries, 142 and a tutty. Uh, taking the Browns here. I mean, I hate, as much as I don't like going against Martin, the, the pick god, uh, I do think that the Bengals got this one. From what I've seen from the Browns is – their offense scheme, their offensive scheme is the Nick Chubb scheme, where Nick Chubb is about, in my opinion, that whole offense. I saw it in the Patriots game. They they stop the run. That all that offense becomes stagnant. They have trouble moving the ball in the passing game. If you look up mid in the dictionary, Jacoby Brissett's uh, player profile comes up. 
Cincinnati has an elite defense, a great run defense specifically, better than their secondary. I think that they're going to stop Chubb. They're going to get behind early, and they're just going to have a, t- a tough time just moving the ball without Chubb being a huge factor in the game. Joe Burrow, he threw four picks his first game and two touchdowns. Everyone was like, what is Cincinnati doing? Are they having a Super Bowl hangover? He's been 13-1 and one since then, as in 13 touchdowns, one interception since then. Joe Burrow has played elite football, especially in the last – two, three weeks, the Cincinnati defense is going to be too much for the Browns to move the ball. And I'm taking Cincinnati here. Kobe, I agree with your reasoning there and I agree with your end result. But as Martin said, I don't think Cincinnati's defense is elite necessarily. Their defensive front is uh, pretty decent. They've been doing good stopping the run. Um, but they couldn't really, I mean, Atlanta's offense isn't, isn't bad at all. It's actually been, been scoring a good amount of points. Um, and they didn't do anything crazy against them. Cincinnati's offense has just been clicking. Like, ever since that week one, it feels like it's been – like, ever since week one, it feels like it's just been nonstop for them. Everything's automatic. Jamar Chase, T. Higgins, Joe Mixon, Tyler Boyd, uh, even Hayden Hurst is getting involved. So you never – like, it's not a one-trick pony like it is with the Rams right now, as it seems, where it's Cooper Copper bust. So I think that's why they're clicking so much. And I'll say after even the first couple of weeks, I wasn't kind of, I wasn't that high on Joe Burrow either. Uh, I thought he was like looking bad, kind of on a Super Bowl hangover. Maybe he wasn't like as good as he seemed, but I, that he shoved that down my throat and he is very good. And that offense is high powered. And I think the Bengals just won't be able to keep up with it. That being said, it's going to be a gritty night in Cleveland. It's going to be cold, little rain. And uh, the dog pound is not a friendly place to be a visitor in. I could say that from experience, but I'm still going off the Bengals here. Uh, I forget who said it, but someone said it. Monday night, everyone's going to be watching. I like the under in this game. Uh, under is 10-2 and two in the Bengals' last 12 games, and the Browns, like everybody said, are kind of like a little disappointing, but granted, they have Jacoby, so it's not full strength yet. But I think the under 47s play here. I think this could be both teams below 20 type game. I don't love the, the Bengals. Like, I want to take the Bengals. I'm leaning Bengals, but I don't love them especially minus three and a half. If it was three or two and a half, maybe, but it could be a very well field goal type game. So I'm just going to take the under here. Bengals in this one. Um, I was actually going to take this for my lock of the week if it was available. The Browns have four straight losses. They're sitting at two and five. And you just look at that team and there's just a bang of mediocrity coming from it, if you ask me, especially on the offensive side of things. Yes, they are run heavy. Nick Chubb is elite. We all know that. But you have a fantastic running back in in Kareem Hunt and you're not utilizing them enough and in the passing game Cooper Amari Cooper David Njoku and Kareem Hunt are the only players to have a receiving touchdown on that team so receiving and catching any sort of passes is a huge issue for this Browns team and like I was talking about in the earlier game there if the Browns fall behind to the Bengals I just can't see them airing it out and and having a chance to fight back. How can you compete with Jamar Chase and Joe Burrow? Jamar Chase is 262 yards and four touchdowns in his last two games. The man is playing off the charts. Like he's he's fantastic at the moment. Like Kobe was saying, I think the run defense of the Bengals is actually pretty decent. And when you think about that Atlanta Falcons team that they played, yes, Sam, I agree with you. Their offense isn't that bad, but their passing attack is dreadful. Their run game, Mariota using his legs. The Bengals were able to stop that pretty damn well. And I think if they can stop Chubb, which is no easy task, but if you can sort of just dampen that run game just a bit, they have a great chance to win this and win it comfortably, which is why I'm going to go for the three and a half in the spread for the Bengals. And I like the under because of the Browns offensive issues. I just, I just don't think they can pass the ball. And I think that there's a thing with this Browns team that receivers, I'd love to see how it shifts if Deshaun Wack. Deshaun Watson, Deshaun Watson makes his appearance again in week 11. If that happens, I think that can change the dynamic of this, this team altogether. But there's no idea, and we can't predict how that'll, how that'll change things. But at the moment, this team just cannot pass the ball and pass it well and effectively. So I like the Bengals in this one. Sam's uh, weather report is all I really needed. Um, wet, rainy, they're just going to pound the ball. Chubb and Hunt, give me the brownies. Game three on the slate here. Sunday Night Football. One of the most surprising spreads I think I've ever seen in my life. Green Bay Packers, fresh off three straight losses. I'm pretty sure that's the first time that's ever happened in the Mount LaFleur era. I don't know that for sure, but I'm pretty sure. Packers are 10 and a half point dogs, double digit dogs in Buffalo. Totals 47 and a half. This game is really interesting, especially because we are in a situation right now with the Packers and the Buccaneers, Aaron Rodgers and Tom Brady, and it's at a crossroads. They have the same record as the Chicago Bears, rebuilding team. 
not trying to pump anyone's tires or anything, but just you're trying saying. to pump it. You're trying to pump it. Don't worry. Don't worry. I mean, the bears maybe. are back. The bears, bears are, back. are bears are back. All right, I'm gonna, get to, I'm gonna get to that next or after this game. Um, ten and a half. Aaron Rodgers has never been a double digit dog in his entire career. This is unheard of as a Packers fan. Just seeing Packers plus anything is honestly kind of crazy. And then you see more than one digit. That makes it even crazier. I'm going to take the Packers spread here. As I like to say, I said a lot last year, 10 and a half is just a lot of damn points. That is a lot of points. And the Bills, yes, they are incredible. They're an amazing team. They're looking like the Super Bowl front runner besides the Eagles or the Chiefs maybe. I don't see the Packers coming in and getting blown out here, especially after losing three in a row. I think something's got to give for them. I don't know if they're going to win it. I, I hate that I'm still like, giving Aaron Rodgers credit like this, but I think him and Matt LaFleur are too experienced and kind of like just too good at what they do to go in and keep making the same mistakes over again like my franchise has been or does a lot of the time. Um, but, yeah, I don't think they get blown out in this game. I don't want to touch the total, really, because this could be a 14-12 kind of situation like it happened with the Bucks, or it could end up being a shootout or it could end up being a blowout. But I'm going to go with my gut and say Packers plus 10 and a half. Uh, I like the Packers. Like, Sam hates Packers, so his pride aside, like, I think he knows that it's going to be a close game. I'm taking the Packers here. I think Packers money line is like really the play. That's what I'm going to actually take in real life. But in terms of the show, Packers plus 10 and a half. Packers absolutely have to win this game. The NFC is not that great. They still have a chance. They're not dead yet. And they know that once it gets to crunch time, like if it's Bears versus Packers week 18, they can win that game and make the playoffs. So I think this is a game you have to win. Um, I'm taking the under here as well. I think it's going to be a low scoring game if the Packers are going to have a chance. So I think that the under – and the Packers here, and I would take Packers money line. It's a national televised game. I mean, getting embarrassed at 1 o'clock is a lot different than getting embarrassed in front of everybody. Despite Aaron Rodgers having just about me to throw to, uh, he's seventh in completions and seventh in touchdowns, like despite having what looks like a running back as his best receiver. So I think that yeah, the, that Aaron Rodgers is going to do everything in his control to at least not lose this game by over 10 points. I think that if the, the receivers don't play well, I'm sure Aaron Rodgers has sent them and their families many death threats, and uh, they kind of have to step up here. I just think that this team is it has too much of a history and a pride to go out here and get absolutely embarrassed. I mean, yes, I think the Bills are a terrific team. They're probably the most talented roster in the NFL, but they are known to have some shaky games. I think last year they had a, like a 9-6 loss to the Jaguars, and everyone was looking like like it was a team they had never seen before. So I know the the Bills are are like they're good for like one or two like terrible games a year. So I think that uh, they're not going to win, but I think they're going to at least cover the spread because Aaron Rodgers not letting himself get embarrassed on national TV. Um, Aaron Rodgers, one of the goats, and he's never been a double digit dog. This is going to be a mistake. People who are taking Bills minus ten and a half, you better be from bumfuck Buffalo if you're betting that, uh, and you better have the most team pride of all time. Tredavious White is out. Shout out Kyer Elam. Y'all are probably they're, they're still they're still probably going to win, but ten and a half points. Aaron Rodgers is going to make this a good game. It's going to be out with the old, in with the new. ESPN or whatever air, it's network it's airing on. It's going to make a whole you know big spiel about it. And then after the after the game, the Bills will probably win like thirty one to twenty three. Um, and Aaron Rodgers and Josh Allen are going to do like the hug and talk thing. That picture is going to be all over social media. Let me just make sure I didn't touch the total on this game. I like formulate my picks instead of, oh, I have the over actually. I have the over, which is, which is great because I just said 31, 23 final book it. And uh, that's over 47 and a half. So give me Packers plus 10 and a half. Give me over 47 and a half. What happens when you put the number one defense in football against a team who cannot pass the ball? The under, the under hits. Under 47 and a half in the Packers and Bills game is going to hit because the Packers, like two of the previous teams I've just spoken about, they just cannot pass the ball. This is not the Packers of the past and we need, look, I'm a Cowboys fan. I live in the past. It's what I do to get through each day, but we need to move on as Packers supporters. And if you're going to take them, the Packers betting on the Packers is not betting on them a few years ago when Devontae Adams was there. It's a different team altogether. The scheme altogether has changed as well. They can't run the ball and hope that Devontae Adams is free like they used to because they're just missing these, these pieces uh, on offense, especially on, in the passing game. They just aren't there. Alan Lazard leaves the, leads the team in receiving with 340 yards. Stefan Diggs leads the Bills in receiving with 656 yards. That just shows you the level of these two teams and both offenses. 
when you're dealing, I, I agree with you, Scott, you know, the, the number one defense and the Packers suck and they can't throw the ball and their wide receivers can't catch anything. But when you're dealing with greatness, and here's my thing, greatness always prevails, right? The Aaron Rodgers is the second best quarterback in this current generation. So when we're talking about someone who has, you know, he doesn't have the weapons right now and we, we, we say all this stuff, I just think that this game is so important, not only to him, but to the team morale. And, you know, it's it, usually when Aaron Rodgers goes in the media and says like crazy stuff like that, usually the team, that's when the team starts performing. That's when the team starts performing. Yes. Every, that's exactly every when every single time he goes and he's yep. like, oh, I, we suck and my receivers suck. And that is exactly when everything starts falling into place. So I think this week is going to be a huge week for the Packers. I'm actually going to take, of course, I'm going to take the spread because it's just super disrespectful. Um, but I'm also going to go ahead and take the over too because I think they're going to surprise the Bills and put a lot of points up on the board. And, uh, you know, obviously the Bills, the Bills offense is as explosive as they are. We'll put some points up on the board too. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to take Packers spread and I'm going to take the over. I'm going to be the one guy that um, takes the Bills. Uh, I'm not from bum fuck uh, Buffalo Martin, but I, uh, I have no faith in the Packers. I think the Bills are going to beat them by three touchdowns. I, uh, I'm going against the crowd. Maybe that's why I'm in last, but his his cellmates talking to him, everybody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we go to the rivalry game of the week. This is one that we've all been waiting for for a few weeks now. Uh, two of our most animated members of the show here going head to head. Uh, Sam's Chicago Bears fresh off a seven and a, or what was it? Seven and a half point spread money line victory against the New England Patriots. It closed at nine. Nine, even better. So blah, 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 blah. versus in Jerry World. Dallas Cowboys, who are nine and a half point favorites. So you guys go ahead and take it away. Sam, you go ahead. I'll give I'll I'll give you the ropes on this one. You, you Scott, take it away. Right. Scott's gonna bum rush you here, Sam. <laughs> no, I know. I'm I'm trying to do my best to not let him do it. The point of this show is to give people free money. And that is the point spread nine and a half bears versus cowboys. Okay. And I have a little note sheet right here. If I can get it out. And it says. Besides the Packers game in week two, the Bears haven't lost by more than one possession. Out of their four losses, three of them were by one possession. And the biggest one was the eight-point loss to the Giants, where Vilas Jones muffed a punt as he normally does in his three games of NFL experience. And that kind of blew it for them. So the Bears aren't getting blown out. Well, you could say anything you want about their roster or whatever. They're just they're not getting blown out. Like they're playing games close except for the Packers, but that's the Packers. Aaron Rodgers, would he would turn down a billion dollars to go play the Bears and beat them. The Cowboys, they look they look okay. Like, they look good. I'm not going to say they look okay. They look good. They look like a good team. Their offense is kind of clicking. Look great. Look great. The defense is looking good. Okay. I'm not like – Don't look anything. great, Scott. You beat the Lions. Like, you're not great. Sorry. All right. Yeah, okay. So, they're not they're – not is, is this a crowd debate? Is it? Is it? Am I going to talk about I know it's just I know it's just YouTube, but you're <laughs> this is killing you. Wait till get over it. Lions doesn't make you great. That's all I have to say. But go ahead. I'll be done soon. The the Bears offense looked good last week. Justin Field. They find mm-hmm. the coaches finally got a game plan together that works yeah. to our quarterback strengths, which was not have him sit in the pocket and throw like he's Jay Cutler. Let him move. Let him use his mm-hmm. talents. Design runs and everything. And what do you know? It worked. Third downs. They were disciplined. Didn't take any pen or barely took any penalties. It was it was beautiful to watch. I almost shed a tear how, how amazing it was in Foxborough against Bill Belichick, too. So I'm not going to come in here and say the Bears are going to win this game because they're the better team. I'm going to come in here and say that the Bears aren't going to lose this game by 10 points. Because And I don't I don't really have anything to say about the over under, considering what happened last week, where everyone had the under 40 as the game of the century and the Bears almost put up 40 themselves. But, yeah, I mean, it's I think. And it's not even biased to say that based on the statistics from this year, it would be stupid not to take Bears plus nine and a half because as good as the Cowboys may look at sometimes, they're not the Bills, they're not the Chiefs, and they're not the Packers who play against the Bears, but the Packers suck in general unless they're playing against the Bears. Fair enough. Look, you go into New England, no one gives you a fighting chance, not even myself, not even – I mean, 
look, you might probably won't admit to it, but you were probably having certain doubts. Maybe, just maybe, oh, yeah. where this thing, right? Mm-hmm. But Sam, your offense is literally the worst in the league in passing the ball. You cannot move the ball downfield. You, you, you check the stats, man. I'll, I'll get them out of my hat. I'll get my cowboy hat somewhere and pull them out for you, man. You just can't pass the ball. You can run the ball, but you can't pass it. So my point being, but that doesn't that doesn't take away from the fact that we're not getting blown out. Like, yeah, you can say it all you want. The, yeah, their passing offense has sucked. It's been awful, yeah. but that doesn't that doesn't mean that the the Cowboys are going to win the game by ten points because no one else has has beaten them by. Well, a big it does mark. because this is why it it means the Cowboys win the game by more than ten points because if we go ahead, you guys can't pass the ball, so we'll just stuff the run, and you guys won't put up points. So I could see the winning margin being a lot bigger on that front. Look, you you guys are the fir- fourth worst in the league at defending the. Pa- Defending the rush, right? What have the Cowboys done all year? Zeke Pollard, Zeke Pollard, Zeke Pollard. Those two are going to eat up on the, this Bears defense. Who are the Cowboys beat? They're this, they're that. Look, we, we bet the Super Bowl matchup of that of last year. What more do you want me to say? Every team we've beaten, we've we've beaten them. We've beaten them well. The two teams we lost this year were the Buccaneers. I mean, first game of the season against Tom Brady. Like, what, what do you expect? Kenny Pickett beat the Buccaneers. Okay, but the Philadelphia Eagles with our backup quarterback, we, we're in a fighting chance, and then he goes off and throws a few picks. Look, we're not talking about that game, but what I'm saying is this Cowboys team, is, it's believing, right? And I do not want to be that guy to damage your hopes and Bears. I can see all the Bears fans, and they're, they're loving this, and they're bare down. Y'all ain't making playoffs. Let's say how it is, right? That's not happening. So, I never Cowboys, no. I know, but this is what I'm saying. The Cowboys are going to make the playoffs, in my opinion, or we're, at least we have a fighting chance to do it. The teams you've beaten this year, the Patriots, the Texans, the 49ers. You bet the 49ers and the Blizzards. The Texans don't know what's going on. And the Patriots end up putting in Bailey Zappi. Oh, and my God. Like the, I'm being yeah, that guy. I'm being that guy. The son. Niners didn't play in the rain either. Every damn time. Oh, the Niners win doesn't count because you played in the rain. Both teams played in the rain. I'm not saying it doesn't count. I'm, but you got to put the elements into it. Myers can't pass the ball. It's in Jerry world. Personally, I believe we've the better coach as well. We've more momentum Whoa. going for us. Yes, you do. Oh, are you calling Mike McCarthy a good coach? Yeah, well, uh, sorry, how many? Am I, oh, yeah, uh, no Super Bowl victories for your head coach, um, one for ours. Yeah, I would be right saying that. He's going to coach three yeah. games. Mike McCarthy think, was good 10 years ago. Sorry, Sam, what's, what's your team's record? You're nervous. <laughs> you're scared. I'm nervous. I, I can tell. Nervous. You're I don't scared. Get you're talking way too much for a guy that's very <laughs> confident about his team. I'm you confident about my boys. You're better quarterback, better You had to attack. Better you had to personally game. attack me about our record. Hey, I, I mean, whatever happens, happens. May the best team win. But I yeah, mean, it yeah. to me. You're not that confident. Your team I'm very <laughs> confident in my Cowboys to cover. You're because, to, you're like I was saying, you guys cannot defend the run. We will run it up the <laughs> good. And you guys cannot pass the ball. So if we go ahead early, you guys won't be able to compete with us because you can't pass the ball up the field. So that we'll block the run game. We'll be sacking Justin Fields. And suddenly every time the Cowboys get the ball, we'll be running it and scoring. Every time you guys get the ball, we'll be stopping the run and we'll be ready for the pass. So In a perfect I, world, yes. I'll pick first, Sam. Cowboys. Cowboys, I'm riding with Scott. Oh. I'm riding my boy, Sam. Let's go Bears. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to go with you, Scott. Oh, sorry, Sam. I'm going to go with Sam. That's, that's a toy, is it? It's about split. Locks of the week here. What's up? So we didn't say, we didn't specify who wants to go first for locks. If somebody feels really strongly about a lock. I, I'm, I'm very happy. My, lock, my, lock. my lock's the Bears, so it's like, I don't need, I already told My lock them. was the Bears that's and then my other one was the Bucks. So I really don't have a lock. Well, you can't pick. Uh, I'm going to stay away from the the Bears and Cowboys game, even though I like the Cowboys and that. Um, My lock of the week is the Titans, minus two and a half at the Texans. Very surprised with that spread. I really like that that pick. I think, look, the Titans, four-game win streak they're on, and they're getting it done. It's not pretty, but they're getting it done. Offensively, they're having passing issues as well, but they're running the ball through Derrick Henry, and, I mean, that guy... He just takes over when he has the ball. Um, their defense is top five against the run, and they're going up against Damian Pierce, a fantastic rookie running back, but they'll be ready for him. Davis Mills, bit of respect for that guy. I mean, I feel like he's the least talked about quarterback in the NFL, um, and he, he's doing the best with what he's got. But unfortunately, the, the, the Texans just are struggling at the moment, and the Titans are on a four-game win streak, like I just said, and they're fresh because they only had a bye two weeks ago. So Titans win this, minus two and a half. Really comfortable, really happy with that luck. I am going to go with the Dolphins minus three and a half against the Lions. Two is a god. He'll sh- he's shaking the rust off. I'll go next. This one seemed pretty clear to me. Uh, Jags are playing Broncos. They are in London. In London. Go in London. Oh, yeah. 
Uh, they're minus two and a half favorites, but it doesn't matter. Jags looked pretty good at last week against the uh, Giants, so I got the Jags. Uh, I'm sticking with the same game here, Sean. I'm taking the under in the Jags-Broncos game. I don't have the stats offhand, but I know that the under is very prevalent in the London games. I think that this is probably a game that no one will watch because it's at 930 in the morning and both of these teams are not good. Russell Wilson was doing high knees and other workout activities for four out of the eight hour flight to London. That was reported this morning. That dude is just like the biggest tool of all time. And I think the team is sick of it. And I think that they're giving up on him. Uh, and Brett Rippin basically did just as good as him last week. So I like the under in this game. Both these offenses suck. And I think that this is an under type game. And I just, for the record, I've taken the under as my lock for like four weeks in a row. I don't like taking unders, but it seems to be working. So I'm going to continue to do it. I'm going to hop in because my luck is also an under. I have the Rams 49ers under. Both both defenses might not be performing as they should be. I mean, the Rams have defensive studs all over. Jalen Ramsey, Aaron Donald. The the 49ers might not have the defensive studs, but they have a great scheme. And they're banged up, but they, they're they a good defensive team. But my my reason for this pick is, is mainly because of the offenses. I mean, Jimmy Garoppolo, I love him. He was on the Patriots. I, I, I love him. I prefer him to do great, but... He is a game manager and he knows the system, but it's not much more than that. Besides Debo Samuel, I really couldn't tell you who he's throwing to. The run game is Christian been, McCaffrey. Oh, Christian McCaffrey now. Yeah, the, they, they do have Christian McCaffrey now, but still he's still like getting in there. I mean, he he was he's he's a great running back, but he hasn't been performing this season as most would expect it. Matthew Stafford throws to to Cooper Cup, whether all eleven defenders are on there. They could box in one Cooper Cup. They could throw three fans and two refs on Cooper Cup. He's throwing the ball to Cooper Cup. His elbow injury seems to be more significant than they've been saying. The The offense just doesn't look good. They they had Cam Akers, who's a good running back. They don't use him. They have Darrell Henderson as their starter, I'm pretty sure, right now. They're just Their offense looks awful. They're putting up, I believe, about 17, 19 points a game, which is not what you would expect from the Rams after last season. Uh, the 49ers offense just hasn't looked that great all year. I mean, I know the 49ers just gave up a bunch of points to – uh, the Chiefs, but every team would give up a bunch of points to the Chiefs. So I'm taking the under here. I think this is going to be a low, like 2017, 21, 18 type of game. I just think that both offenses are struggling. Both have good enough defenses to where th this game is going to be a low scoring game. For me, I'm going to go, Tom, you're going to love this. <laughs> Steelers plus 11 against the Eagles. I Nathan, think the Eagles like, I'm, I'm never going to take the Steelers as my lock, but this is the lock of the week. I'm just saying. Dude, I actually this, like this, I don't know, something about it is just like, Eagles are due for a shitty game. And I think this is this is the one. Like you were saying, like, they're going to look ahead and be like, oh, we're playing the Steelers. And they're going to, they might fuck around. I don't think, they, maybe, maybe they don't lose, but they're going to fuck around and like, damn near lose. Yeah. Steelers plus 11. I really like, dude, I don't know. Maybe I'm just pussy, but I really just like, I want to pick a, a team, but I can't. The totals have been doing me. First of all, when I took the Giants Ravens over, I know you guys, um, I know you guys were like, oh, like it's obviously going to hit. And then it didn't hit because Saquon took a knee right before the end zone. <laughs> uh, so technically it hit, but that's fine. My, my over pick last week hit. Texans Titans over 40 and a half. Don't have anything fancy for you guys this time. Um, it's going to be a ground and pound game, but I saw a tweet today that I'm sticking to Derek Henry when he plays, uh, the Texans the last three times, I think he's gone over 200 yards mm -hmm. for studies each time. I don't know if you guys saw that tweet, something yeah. ridiculous. Well, Martin, like the, the Texans have the worst Russian defense in, in the league. So he's going to get in. Oh, so, so he's good. He's bound to get in. There's no exactly. other option. And Damian Pierce is pretty damn good too. He is, um, he is. So I don't know. Davis Mills will probably throw one. Uh, Tannehill will probably have one in the air too. Maybe one rushing. Uh, I like the over 40 and a half. That's easy. So easy. All right. Uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, let's enjoy football this week. This is a much better slate than last week. So I'm more excited to watch football this week. Uh, thanks everybody for joining and like to subscribe.